All right, so it is time to get back into reloading. We got the brass cleaned, ready to go. In the video right before this, I took all my dies off the press, cleaned them up. In that video, I talked about because I'm switching to the Hornady one shot. This is a case lube that doesn't interact well with the lanolin lube I've always used. So you have to do a deep clean and degreasing of your dies. We're using the Dillon XL650. We got a bullet feeder, we got a case feeder. It's been probably two years since I've reloaded, so I think it's about time we get back into it. Hopefully I still know what to do. Stay tuned, we'll find out. Now this video is for putting Lee dies on the Dillon press. It's a little bit different. You gotta use real thin lock rings because the Lee dies are not as long as the Dillon, so they have to be screwed all the way into the press. All right, so we're gonna start by putting in the Dillon tool head and inserting the retaining pins. This is just so it doesn't slide out of the way. Now in station one, we're gonna start with our sizing decapping die. Very important to set this die correctly. You're gonna set that lock ring all the way to the top, screw it in just until it touches that shell plate. Then we're gonna lower the ram and turning in one quarter turn. Now this is very important because every die position after this is going to be tuned off of this setting. So never just adjust this die. If you adjust this die, every other die is gonna be out of sync. So we just want that one quarter to one half turn extra just to give a little cam over effect. So now we're going to take a clean piece of brass, insert it into the shell plate for station one. Luckily Dylan has them numbered. We're going to size that piece of brass. Now here I'm just putting a primer in it just because I had primers in the tube. Now this is a very important step is you're going to do the plunk test with the brass only. You want to do this before the bullet and after the bullet. A lot of people just want to do the plunk test on the completed round. But if you had an issue with your sizing brass, you may be chasing an issue with your completed cartridge and that not be the problem. Now this case should fall freely with just a flick of a fingernail or tapping on a barrel. So this is one of the two dies we cannot use from the Lee set. Obviously the Lee powder through expanding die would not work with the Dillon powder measure. So I have the double alpha expander powder funnel inside of the Dillon powder die. Now this is going to take several steps to adjust since I have to get it in sync with my bullet feeder. So with this step, we will need the powder measure. So I'm just gonna barely finger tighten one side cause I'm gonna have to keep taking this off or have it slide while I'm adjusting it. Uh, I'll put a picture in here in a minute. You only want it to bell the mount of the case enough for the bullet feeder to drop a bullet or projectile on top of it and it not fall out. So with this step, we screw it in halfway. You're going to do multiple adjustments until you get that chamfer just right. So as you can see, I grabbed a bullet that I'm going to be using and I'm just checking the placement. It wasn't enough. So you insert it back into station two and you just keep working the die down until you get the proper adjustment that you need. I do have previous videos on the upgrades I did on this press. One of the videos being the double alpha powder funnel. Uh, had to chamfer, do a little bit of sanding on it. Make sure you go check that video out if you are using a bullet feeder and you're using the double alpha powder funnel. So you can see here, I'm not quite where I wanna be. I'm putting some pictures off the double alpha manual. Now you wanna be right here in the middle, just where it reaches that chamfered area. You can see in the middle here, you're good on the right. That was way too much bell. You're gonna reduce the life of your case. Uh, you're gonna risk stretching it and cracking it. Once you go to remove that bell by crimping it, any out of stress is just not worth it. So here we're going to take off the powder funnel and tighten that lock ring down. Definitely don't want that thing sliding around on you. For the next step in station three, we'll be using the DAA bullet feeder die. In my opinion, this is the best bullet feeding die because it actually has the metal detent balls inside of it. Now, with this step, you're going to have to use a case, just like all the other ones, use a case that you've prepped in the previous stations this turn. Now, I'm gonna fill the double alpha bullet feeding die with the projectiles that I'm gonna be using. I think it holds like five or six. This is just gonna hold the weight on it. Now, you're gonna raise this case up into that bullet feeding die and screw it in just until you see 
the bullets drop down. You'll hear it audibly and you'll see it. Lower the shell plate and you're going to turn it in one quarter turn. Now this is the position you want to set the bullet feeding die. Tighten that lock ring all the way down. Now you don't want to over tighten this because it's not as strong as the regular dies. You do want it tight though because if it does slip away it's going to drop all your bullets and it makes a big mess. Now I want you to test this three to four times just to make sure the bullets are entering the case correctly. You're not having double feeds. Now for station four, I will be using the Lee seeding die. Now it's also a crimp die, but I'm going to be using the factory crimp die. You don't want to confuse these. The seeding die is the tapered bottom where the factory crimp die is flat. Also the knurled grip on the seeding die is much thicker. Now you're going to use the flat ended insert. That's what comes with it. There's a different insert in the factory crimp die. You're going to screw the seating plug on. Now on this step, you're going to want the lock ring screwed out as well as the seating plug. You want to now again, the case we're using has to be ran through the previous dies. All we're going to do, put it in the shell plate, raise it up into the die, and screw it in until it makes contact with the case. Now if you're not using the factory crimp die, I will tell you how to use this as your crimp. But I prefer the factory crimp die. We'll get into that later. So I've made contact with it. I'm going to turn it just a hair more, just to pinch it. Now I raise the shell plate to hold it in place so that die doesn't spin on me. I tighten that lock ring. Again, the only amount of crimp I'm doing with this per se is just removing some of that bell so it's not so aggressive when it goes into my factory crimp die. So once you get your lock ring tight, you're just going to lower that shell plate, grab a projectile, place it inside of it. Once you insert this into the die, all you got to do is screw that seating plug until you make contact, and you're just going to keep screwing it in until you get your overall length that you need. I do suggest the plunk test. I'll do that after my factory crimp die setting. Now you're just going to keep adjusting this, raising it, adjusting it, raising, similar to how you did on that powder die. Now, if you're like me, you use a dummy round. This is my favorite load. This is the, my favorite overall length. So I always keep these for every load I do. All I have to do is put that into the shell plate. I already have my case length set. That's what we did first. But with the seating plug, I'm going to go ahead and back it out so I don't mess up my dummy die. But with the seating plug, all I got to do is go down until I touch that projectile. It's already at the length I need. And then I just screw it in a little bit more just for the play that it gave. And now I'm set. Always remember to put your dummy round back in your bag. You don't want to get that mixed up, especially if you didn't put powder in it. So as you see, I got a little drawer I keep them in. Now, if you are using this die to crimp and you're not using a factory crimp die, this is where you would set your crimp now that you have everything set. Basically, you would loosen that lock ring, screw your die body in one half turn. You can play anywhere from a quarter to three quarters for the amount of crimp that you want. Nine millimeters of taper crimp, so be careful. Once you get that crimp set, you'll tighten your lock ring, and then however much you screw that die body in, you're going to unscrew the seating plug. This will cancel out that size difference. When you screw that body in, it's going to press the projectile in further also, so you need to make up for that difference. All right, so here in Station 5, we have the Lee Factory Crimp Die. Now, this is the pistol crimp die. A uh, cool fact about the pistol crimp dies, not the rifles, is inside of this die actually reforms the walls of your case. Now this is going to improve the function and cycling in a variety of firearms. So same as all the other ones, lock ring all the way up, adjustment screw, seating plug. I guess it's not really a seating plug on this die, but screw that plunger all the way out. You're going to screw this die into station 5. And of course, I tossed that other round. I didn't want to mistake it for my dummy round, so I tossed it in the bin. So I'm just going to run a fresh piece of brass through all the previous stations. That way everything is in sync. We don't accidentally mess up, grab a wrong piece, whatever. Now, once I have everything set from the dies beforehand, I'm actually going to pull it off the die. Because when you first adjust this, you need to have an empty shell plate carrier. We're going to screw it in all the way down until it touches that shell plate carrier. Now since I'm running progressive, if you remember that station one, we screwed in further to cam over. 
I'm just going to unscrew it a few degrees just so it's not pushing hard on the shell plate. But I do want it to be the full length of the brass. I don't want to lift it up any. So now you put your seated cartridge up in there. You're going to screw that plunger until it touches it. Lower it out, screw it in one half a turn. Now, once you raise it, you will kind of roll crimp that into the projectile, the edge of the mouth of the case. Now, you'll obviously want to plunk this. You can adjust the level of your crimp by screwing it in or out. Half a turn is about the general area of setting you're going to want to be at. Now, the same way as before, you want the plunk test to fall easily out of the barrel. We'll talk about this some more later on. Obviously check your micrometer, make sure you have the right overall length. I didn't have mine on me. I will before I actually start production. Again, I always like to plunk inside of a barrel, my most pickiest barrel, which is this seven and a half inch AR9. If, it'll, if it will feed and cycle in there, it will feed and cycle in all my handguns, all my AR9s, my AK9, Vitiaz, all that stuff. Always use the barrel you're gonna be using. Now I'm ready to fill the bullets, fill the powder, fill the cases. Primers already have some in it. Got a big bucket of brass washed. Got a box of bullets. Got another bin, a little bit of tarnish on the top I need to go through. I haven't been down here and reloaded in two years. Uh, I need to check the powder. I believe all my eight pound jugs are still sealed. My four pound jug was open. I don't know how much is in it. And then there's various one pounders. Uh, I just need to go through it all. Never do this. This is sickening. That cheap little Lee, you can leave powder in there for two years, it'll never hurt it. The expensive RCBS and Dillon's, well, they get upset, cry, whatever. They melt, discolor, don't do that. Again, I did all this for the Hornady one shot, I think is what it's called. Yeah, one shot lube, it doesn't work well with the lanolin. Uh, I got the Frankfurt Arsenal, I have a video on this. The Viber Prime. Well, tips and tricks on how to use that. I fucking love that thing. I can fill these up in no time at all. I said it's been a while, so I definitely will not hit that 14 to 1600 rounds per hour mark. But I'm hoping after this weekend to be up above a thousand. Always remember, you will need to tighten your set screws on your powder hopper, and you will have to put in your powder bar which this is real simple to put in I'm not gonna put it in right now because I do still want to run a few more while I adjust my overall length to make sure it's good uh, my flare was a little excessive so I may back this out about a quarter turn just to help with my case just to help with my case stress and then my powder shouldn't have changed my powder load my drop weight so obviously check that I have a video on all this stuff all the snowshoes parts there's my cat, I gotta get her out of here. Uh, I have videos on all this stuff, the snowshoes upgrades, everything I've done to it. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. Until then, happy reloading.